We have been delayed long enough. We will go to Jagatai and Fulgrim. They have been dragged into another conflict. Again? This is clearly the enemy at work, but none of the foes they have been fighting seem chaos related. Mal speaks up. Can we have Horus go to them instead? The Albion Hives are still rocked by the McDonald slash Kirsten scandal. Both houses are threatening civil war. Looks like Hero got caught with Lord Ronald's wife. <laughs> nice. This is hardly the first time a Kirsten scion has been caught with another lord's wife. Just let them have an honour duel and be done with it. Emps is clearly sick of the bickering and goes back to sipping his drink as Mal runs more general current Terran politics by us. I soon get an idea. If Emps and Mal are tied here, can't I link up with Pretty Boy and Khan? I will totally have Angron, Legos and the Sunny Dogs with me. Plus the Warhounds Honour Guard have just arrived in Seoul and are resupplying at Saturn. I suggest as much to Big E and Mal. That could work. I will send word to Magnus to redirect his fleet to meet up with you as well. Mal shifts slightly. This seems risky. Do you really feel Anon is ready? Angron is not yet at full strength. Is sending them out to the Crusade proper wise? We don't have much choice. Anon. Big E glances my way. Needs to step up to his role. And the Warhounds need their Primarch. Seems rather confirmed then. When should we head out? You will leave for Saturn by the end of the day. From there, a fleet will be rallied. I go peel. This is really quick. Emps places his hand on my shoulder. Be at ease and all. You have been prepared for this. You will have plenty of support. You just have to be the face of your expeditionary fleet. You can do this. It's just like Parthai Secundus. Raza and the men are eager to get back to the Crusade. They were packed and ready in two hours. Zul is staying behind. He has other commitments planet side. Being my chitter isn't his only gig. Durin is terrified. I ensure him we would keep him safe. If anyone takes him into a combat zone, they are getting in huge trouble. Angron had already headed off to meet the Warhounds. This time heading out was a lot more rushed. There was no parade or crowds. I boarded a non-warp ship to get to a port station around Saturn. It would be a week till the ships were fully stocked and ready. I didn't really get to see or mingle with the ship's crew on the way. Angron and his boys were waiting for us when we arrived. The marines were shell-shocked to have met their Primarch, so they were rather hard to read. I don't recognise any of them though. Our meeting did draw a rather large crowd on the station though. Angron and I took a few pictures and signed a few things for some of the staff and civvies passing through. The Warhounds had their own quarters on the station. It was rather empty right now beside the eleven marines, Angron, me and the Sunny Dogs. While we waited on the preparations, the Warhounds did some drills with the Solars. I did get a few visitors in the way of officers, but nothing big. A few wanted my help with station politics, but I politely shot them all down. It was pretty cool to see the Warhounds train and spar. Even not at full strength, Angron can body a few marines at once. Legos has also been sparring with Angron regularly. For you guys that don't know, it was actually quite big, um, sparring within the Warhounds Legion. It's yeah. a really big pastime of theirs, yeah. um, being like a gladiatorial sort of yeah. knockoff. My fleet has been prepped. My flagship is a Gloriana class, the Grey Citadel. I have 80-ish other ships leaving with us, with more to join us on the way. I will have over 300-ish ships under my command officially. In reality, I am basically a mascot. My real job is to shake hands, wave at the cameras, and inform the Primarchs we will be picking up on stuff we need to know. I'm basically going to be babysitting demigods. The hell even is my life? What I'm thinking is like a scratch record. Hi, this is me. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> it all happened when Ems met Mal. <laughs> <laughs> my time is mostly spent doing paperwork between meetings. The army leaders aboard are running things mostly, but I have offered to help with the mundane paperwork and have attended meetings all over the fleet. I spent most of the feasts at each planet we stopped, at mostly just showing up, make a speech, and shake some nobles hands and go back to paperwork. At least the officers in my fleet seem like pleasant people. They were really tense at first. I had my first compliance. We found a world in the system we thought was uninhabited by imperial estimates. The fourth planet from the star was the frozen desert world. The locals had settled the system after fleeing their old home during the long night. They had regressed to a semi-feudal level but had a complete record of their people's history. They live in half-buried towns on the surface and large underground cave cities. 
They had an interesting system of using the planet's steam vents to warm their homes and raise their crops. The clan leaders swore oaths to the Imperium, and we left them with some voxes for when a follow-up fleet arrived. We entered the system where we were to meet the pretty boy and speedster. <laughs> Fucking speeds. <laughs> Speed of contact, please. God's sake. A frontier world taken from a minor orc empire. Only a few hundred thousand human colonists live there. We were dropping off around 60,000 more. I authorised a number of the army tank units to help clear ground for the colonists and help with the construction while we waited for the Primarchs. This would be where we would leave our charge, the former Hive Governor's daughter. She would be marrying the new PG's son, who was just turning 14. Jesus Christ. What is it with all these stories? Can't I, Governor, got daughters? It's always a fucking daughter. <laughs> yeah. It's always up to no good. We had met with the planetary governor, who was a former major in the army, and his family's first, of course. I also got a letter from Russ, wishing me luck. I was visiting a town planet side when we got word of a small fleet entering the system. It wasn't one of ours. It was a combined fleet of the doghead fucks with a few Eldar Corsars. The dogheads likely wanted revenge on me, wiping their core worlds, and the Eldar led them right to me. My fleet wiped theirs, though but they were able to suicide their way through to launch pods planet side. Of course heading right to the region I was in. Because of course they know where I am. Fucking Eldar, I swear. Thankfully the town has defences, and they have to deal with feral orcs. The local militia was on it like clockwork, my solars helping dig in more. We would be ready. Am I getting like Hoth vibes here? It sounds like Hoth. It's gonna give me Hoth vibes. Yeah. The Xenos didn't get very far. Between the frontier men colonists, orc tribes, and Angron, and boys all doing hit and run tactics, most died before even reaching the town. I was in the town's hall bunker, with the local mayor listening and acting as an HQ. I had sent in most of the sunny dogs to help at the wall, the dogheads attacked. They were being wiped out. I let out a chuckle as I learned the town proper would be safe. Then I heard a weird noise, and turned to see a team of Eldar teleported into the bunker. Fuck! Fuck! All hell broke loose. The few Solars still with me opened fire. I jumped down and dragged the mare with me. I crawled and dragged the mare towards the hallway. We had a bit of cover but needed to get the hell out of Dodge. Why didn't I bring my armour? As we made it to the hall, I took a few shots at the Eldar team to hopefully open them up to my Solars. It worked a bit as it distracted the space elves and one went down to the Solar Meltas and Militia Lasfar. The rest shot their Xenos guns at me. I was protected by my bright light, and my necklace was slightly burning my chest. Thanks, Amps. I bolted. That was when I saw Legos punch through the damn wall and drag me through the hole. Once he handed me off to more Solars, Legos went in to kick ass. I really have to say, Anon is getting a lot more competent, uh-huh. and he isn't just completely useless yeah. as what he used to be. And he's not garnering half as much. No, he's not. Like, you know, he, he is getting there, which is really nice to see. I'm really enjoying it yeah. so far. I was moved to a more secure part of the bunker complex. I was given some carpet plates and a flak jacket by some locals. Not much better than just my robes. The Solars held a lockdown till we got an all clear. The Eldar had hit several buildings, but once the team that spotted me was killed, the rest fled. They of course left the remaining dogheads to die. Such great allies! Legos at least downed one of their escape crafts by jumping off a rip and ripping off a wing. Jesus fuck. <laughs> it, it was mental as fuck. And a townswoman caught it on camera. Sway. Lively. <laughs> yeah, okay. what, what, what's the equivalent of the 40k life link? Can someone hit it down below? What's the name of it? I would ensure she would be rewarded well. Angron was pissed he missed the ambush. Thankfully, only the local region was affected. Though a few areas had Xeno ship parts crash into them. I handed my necklace to Fleet Magos to be recharged. We helped the town rebuild and went back to helping the colonists expand. I had the killed Eldar Soulstones taken to my suite. Angron and the Warhounds vented steam and kept hunting feral orcs. Our astropaths gave us word that Magnus would arrive soon, followed by the others. Should be a cool meeting. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video but I just want to talk to you about our new affiliate, Reroll. Reroll is a D&D 5th edition character builder app. Now, everyone needs a character sheet app for a tabletop game, but what makes Reroll stand out above all the rest is its character art. I personally find the character art really, really cool. 
it has this beautiful retro pixel art aesthetic and they are continually adding new races and items so you can customise it whatever way you want. They currently have 14 supported races, over 150 weapons and over 400 pieces of armour you can mix and match from to really make your character come to life. And the best part, you can have your own little cute companion like a little baby penguin, a flying kitty, a stupid looking pug or my personal favourite, a little corgi. And the best thing about Reroll, it has a free version with limited character art so you can try before you buy and see if you like it or not. We personally think it's an amazing app that will just improve your overall enjoyment of tabletop role-playing games. Reroll is on Apple, Android, desktop and if you use our coupon code NECKBEARDIA at checkout you get 10% off. It's a great affiliate that we think you guys will love but enough of that, let's get back to the video. Things were nice and quiet while we waited for Magnus. There was plenty of things to help the colonists sight with, so we kept busy. Forests cleared, fields flattened, town walls raised, and fleet tech boys helped give the colonists some production for basic trucks, trains, and tractors. There was of course plenty of feral orcs for the trips to hunt. When Magnus arrived, we held a feast on the grey citadel. You're not what I was expecting and on. Magnus sips his drink. Our meeting was pretty chill. G-Man said the same. Were you also expecting a scheming seer? He chuckles. Nothing so crass. I was expecting a much older scholar. Maybe a master politician. Father only mentioned you knew a lot of forgotten mysteries. That is an understatement. What exactly do you know? And where did you study such lore? I shrug. I'm a nerd. He just huffs. <laughs> <laughs> Great explanation. Yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> it would be far easier just to let you read my mind once this feast is over so we'll have plenty of time to go over everything. I'll hold you to that. Magnus and I settled on small talk for the rest of the feast. I made rounds to a great many of the new officers that had been entered into my fleet. I saw Angron and Magnus talk for a bit. Afterward, I allowed Magnus to take an overview of what I wanted to show him. I showed him the heresy, a despotic imperium, and the Black Crusades, the War of the Beast, and the opening of the Great Rift. He didn't react well. Magnus isolated himself for days to process this information. I didn't blame him. Be honest with you, it is pretty much Magnus's fault why the Emperor was so... Fucked? Fucked, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, you know. We got word that Fulgrim and the Khan were on their way some days later. Magnus eventually worked through the knowledge I gave him and began his seemingly endless questions. I did my best to answer them, but most I couldn't. I was a lore nerd, but not all-knowing. In happier news... Magnus and his legion had learned to play Angron's and I's war game. Angron played Magnus. It had lots of rule bickering, and those were just as hard fought as the actual match, with the bulk of the legion joining in. The feral orcs were pushed to the boonies of the planet, and even more colonists were dropped off. When the last fleet arrived to do the same, this world's population will have doubled, and also be a lot more built up. The Primarchs were having a private feast between their legions. I left them to it. Family business. Once the two other Primarchs arrive, we will be pushing to unclaimed space. We will be meeting a force of warhounds out there. A group that was nearby that requested to serve under Angron. I was hardly going to turn them down. I also got word that Solomon was also attacked by an Eldar force, though its attackers were Dark Eldar. Damn. They took nearly a third of the Hives world's population too. Nobody deserves that fate. Got word that G-Man faced a pocket empire of human psyker slaves. The witches had a few dozen worlds under their thrall. The Astartes faced some real monsters. Many of their worlds had to be burned. That would probably be the closest to like a chaos world yeah. in this time setting, I think. Magnus asked me to look at some old tombs he had. I knew a few of them, and some were even in English, so I offered to translate them. Made his day. They arrived. I greeted Fulgrim aboard the Grey Citadel. He had an honour guard of Imperial Fists. I guess he and the Khan don't yet have their legions. Sorry that my brother isn't here. He was going stir-crazy and headed planetside to vent. I just laughed. I thought he might. Eager to meet your other brothers? He flashed me his perfect smile. I can hardly wait. We exchanged words for a bit without actually saying any. I pointed him to Magnus and Angron. I now had a few thousand thousand sons. About a chapter's worth of Imperial Fists. Almost a dozen Warhounds with a few hundred on the way. A fuck ton of Imperial Army Troopers and my few hundred solar ox. Damn, we had a big force. We leave soon. I'm pretty sure the Khan is snubbing me. I've only met him in passing. He has refused my every attempt at actually talking. 
He isn't trying to undermine me, so I think he just doesn't like me. I have to go through Fulgrim to get to him to do anything. We have brought three civilized worlds into the fold so far, and settled another frontier world. Magnus and Fulgrim don't seem to get along, and the can refuse to be in the same room as Magnus, unless it's a formal meeting. Angron took to both as long-lost friends, though. Fulgrim can readily be found sparing or working on some project with Angron while on the ship. The can is always right by Angron in battle. In between stops, I have been translating those tombs for Magnus. It's weird to think I'm one of the few people to read and write English in the galaxy. My heart goes out to English majors from my time. <laughs> <laughs> time is starting to blur for me. A world is brought in here. Soon we are fighting orcs or something and resettling a world. We stop for a bit above some world that requires some touch or force, or top off on supplies. Most human worlds welcome us with open arms and joyful tears. Some need to have their faces bloody a bit. It's rare when I have to go give the go-ahead to utterly break their backs. I have a council of the generals and admirals from the fleet, the primarchs, and a few diplomats slash remembrancers, and a few reps from the imperial fists. Angron and Magnus rep their sons. With such a council, I really just listen and follow what they think, and try and use my lore knowledge when it can be applied. I may have final say by right of the Emperor, but these folk know far more than me on how to run this fleet. I may be just some rubber stamp, but I have a lot of paperwork. We're stopped at a rather nice hive world. Theta too endured the long night rather well, finding a pocket empire of nine worlds that fed them food and materials. There was little smog, the water didn't taste bitter, just steel, and crime was low. The Thetans agreed to join after we helped repel a crab-like Xenos race that was harassing several of their colony worlds. Well, that, and the fact that they only had a fleet of a few dozen ships that were all dwarfed by mine. I had just finished a meeting with their leader, who styled himself as a czar. He was a rather blunt and cold fellow, but he was doing great from what I'd seen. I was now seeing some Thetan art museums with Fulgrim, who invited me along. They had some great stuff. It seems that Fulgrim and Angron got the can to give me a shot. I was asked to join him in an attack of the Crab Xenos main forts in a world we were taking from them. That was how I found myself in a land speeder piloted by a Primarch known for speed. Oh. Oh. I think I snapped my neck in one turn, but revived before he noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I, I, look, I don't even like... I don't even do like uh, roller, coasters. roller coasters and stuff, so th that you don't me... even go over thirty mile an hour driving, James. So yeah, I'm not that bad, alright. Mm. <laughs> we killed some crab people together and had a lunch made from the roasted meat. The magos had cleared it as safe. It really seemed to ease the air for him. He had been acting a lot less stiff around me. The crabs have been broken. Their leader and warrior cast have been wiped from the galaxy. Their worker drones will be made a protectorate species. They shall be used as a slave force on a few of their worlds that have potential to become ocean farms. They will also be harvested for their meat. That's pretty brutal, let's be serious. <laughs> That's dystopian Man, next I don't level. care, I like crabs. So <laughs> yeah. Gimme <me> big crab. <laughs> yeah. We oversaw turning their core worlds into agri worlds. This will allow some nearby hive and civilized worlds to have another steady food supply. Plus, we stopped them pirating the local human worlds. We returned to Theta 2 for a triumph they invited us to. They were really happy we crashed the crab folk. The Primarchs and I eat lunch at the estate of the Lady Governor that was holding the parades. She wouldn't stop hitting on Fulgrim. <laughs> Made my night. I danced with one of her daughters. He also showed me around the estate. It was a rather nice evening. Okay guys, so I hope you like that. And I'm really glad to see this guy back. I thought it was just going to end up... A dead thread. I thought it was going to get stuck in the middle of this story, yeah. to be honest with you. But I know there's more to this thread, so don't worry about, oh, we're going to have to wait another week, because you might get it sooner than you think, so just keep an eye on the channel. Remember um, to subscribe, yeah. notification bell. Get Check out notification. everything down Check. below, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!